Hi, this is Ethan Fouts, and I'm here with the unboxing of the Beagle Bone Black, or the BeagleBoard.org is where you can find out more information about that. Anyways, here's a little box that it comes in. Got mine from Element14, as you can see over there in the corner, newark.com and element14.com. Good site to get stuff of this nature. I definitely recommend them, especially if you're in the United States. Anyways, here is Beagle Bone Black, this nice little beagle with a tuxedo. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. There's the top. Has the whole beagle board, obviously. Takes a picture of, of it. On this side, same thing. Um, you know, nice plug for the website. So, and so on. Revision A5B is what I have here. In the bottom, it's made in the United States of America. Represent. It's one gigahertz, 512 megabytes, open hardware, embedded with a well, computer with USB cable on board. 2 gigabytes of internal eMMC memory, which is nice compared to, say, the Raspberry Pi, which doesn't have flash built into it. Micro HDMI port, micro SD slot, Ethernet, USB, and a 5 volt connector. Expansion 65 digital PWMS UARTS 12C SPI more 7 ADC. Yes, that means amps. Can take a, I'm not sure entirely. Anyways, there's the company who actually printed the circuit board, uh, Circuit Co. Don't know much about them, but I'm guessing they're pretty good. So without further ado, let's get this thing opened up here. Got ourselves just a little tab right here. For opening up. Let's see if we can get that kind of opened up that ribbon box. Now, open up the actual contents here. All right. So when you first open it up, there it is in all its freaking glory. We got a little note here saying, thank you for purchasing the Beagle Bone Black. If I can actually get it on the camera here, my bad. <laughs> anyway, so for documentation and software updates, go to www. Actually, not even www. Sorry, I'm default. It said website, access to source code, go to it. another website. Um, on the back side more links to websites and information about support and all that and if you need to get it repaired. Um, designed by BeagleBoard.org, supported by the BeagleBoard.org community, as manufactured in Texas. Cool. If you look on, and if you look inside, you'll have a little quick start guide. You can tether it to a PC. Connect the USB mini cable to a Beagle Bone Black. Connect the other end of the USB cable into the PC, obviously. Look for a new mass storage drive to appear on the PC. Open the drive and click start.htm or HTML. Uh, follow the instructions on this PC as step number five. This documentation is available directly on the Beagle Bone Black. It's accessible uh, via a USB drive. And you can also set it up standalone with keyboard, mouse, and monitor. You just connect up the keyboard and mouse to the USB host port on the board, which we'll look at in a moment. Connect an HDMI cable to the board. Connect the HDMI cable to an HDMI monitor. Um, plug in a 5 volt 1 amp DC power supply. Board will boot. No need to enter any passwords. Desktop will appear on the monitor. For latest online instructions, go to said website. BeagleBoard.org forward slash getting dash started. Well, that's pretty awesome. I mean, the one great thing I do like about this is that it has embeddable memory, so that way you can just kind of plug it in and work straight. So that being said, let's take a look at the actual board. So if you look inside, we'll have, looks like, one board. Hoping for two, dang. <laughs> just kidding. There's the board, and it's a nice anti-static enclosure. Set that right here temporarily. And we also have a USB cable for quick and easy startup access. So we can access the actual drive and put whatever we want on there. Apps, code, whatever, so we can actually start using it for a functional purpose. And uh, looks like it's a micro USB. There you go. USB connector. Observe. You know, just be careful with handling it. Basically, it's uh, very sensitive to electrostatic. So obviously, you want to handle it by the board edges and whatnot. Don't want to touch the actual metal components. That's never a good idea. And, you know, just use common sense when messing with electronics. Or if you don't know much about them, you better develop that common sense duality of, you know, 
realize I'm static electricity out and about. And let's see if I can get this off without, you know, completely destroying the sticker or whatever. There we go. Um, so now let's take a look on the inside. Check it out. There's the board. I'm going to start to slide it out here. Of course, you want to make sure you, know, you don't have too much static built up in your hands before you start handling the board. Alright, and here it is. The Beagle board in all its glory. Check it out. This is pretty amazing. Alright, so we'll start on this side. We have a USB host right here. And below it we have a USB client for powering the... Wait a second. Never mind. Correction, correction. My bad. I'm giving you false information already. There, below that, we have a micro HDMI slot. So if you want to hook it up to your TV, you want to make sure you get an adapter beforehand. Unless your TV happens to have a micro HDMI port. Then if you look over here to the other side, you'll have your micro SD card slot. So you can plug an external SD card for all your SD card needs. <laughs> you can boot from that as well as um, using it just for storage purposes. Here's the inner side of the board. All the resistors, um, circuit chips, chips, chipsets, whatever. Obviously, you don't want to touch it. Got FCC certification and all that. Okay. Pretty exciting stuff. All right. If you look over here on this side, the exact opposite side of the side we're just looking at, obviously, we have a little power 5 volts. We have our Ethernet port for both the 100 and 10 megabit, although I'm sure most of your components will use the 100 megabit at least. We have over here a mini USB, so you can plug in for power, transferring data, so forth and so on, although this is obviously would be the recommended one for the power 5 volt actual connector. And if you look over here, you'll have the header on both sides for adding all sorts of customizations and whatnot. And if you look at the actual board here, there it is. Uh, I'm trying to situate my... Oops, hit the camera. And so I can actually point at the different things here. Okay, right here we have the processor, 1 gigahertz, Texas Instrument ARM type system going on here. Over here, we have our DDR3 memory, 512 megabytes of it to be exact. Over here, we have our HDMI framer, handles a lot of the HDMI uh, stuff. Over here, we have our built-in memory. So when you're first booting from this device, that is actually where you're booting from. And you can actually put you know, all sorts of different stuff on there. Your own custom code, your own custom booter and whatnot. You can of course boot from the SD card as mentioned earlier and uh, you have to mess with these switches. You have your reset button, power button, and also a boot button over here. You have a SD card you formatted for booting into a different Linux distribution or Android or whatever other type of operating system you want to boot. After you plug it in here, before you turn on your device with the power button over here, your power button right here. Uh, you want to hold in this boot switch while you're powering it on and uh, it will boot from the SD card instead of the built-in EMMC memory which is right here. The two gigabytes here. And I believe this supports you know, the standard uh, SD card size is up to 64 gigabytes. And that right there is how you boot from the SD card slot. Anyways, over here we have our power controller, right here, this chip that controls all the power and regulates it, and that, that, that controls the power and whatnot to your components and stuff. Uh, over here we have our Ethernet controller, so of course that handles all your, you know, the basics of the Ethernet, of course the processor is what actually dives deeper into the packets and, you know, actually makes sense of them. Uh, more so than this does. And you have your serial debugging header right here. 
think that covers most of the components. So with that being said, let's do our first boot. So, let's plug it in via USB. You'll have a power light that comes on. And you'll have these other ones come on. The first one's configured to beat in a heartbeat pattern, apparently. The second LED from the edge of the board over here shows light during micro USB access. The third one lights up when there's CPU activity. And the third one is configured when the internal memory is accessed. So, just, just so you know what those are the different LEDs uh, mean, and I'm sure you can configure them and change them up to do different things. So there it is, the Beagle Board. Beagle Bone Black Edition. Oh, and one last thing I forgot to mention. It's right over here. Those little pins right here. Oh, let me get on a pointer. Sorry about that. Right behind the 5 volt line you have these. Which is actually for hardwiring a battery. If uh, that is what the user kind of desires here. So, just a little note. And look at the underside one last time. There it is. In all its glory. Once again.